Okay, so now comes the question, right? When to use what metric? Again, I want to make sure, just make a very clear disclaimer. I'm merely suggesting, okay, your mileage may vary, but this is what I usually do. If work items are taking too long to deliver, um, I look at throughput, lead times, and work item aging. If I feel like if people are complaining about being overburdened and burnt out, I look at flow load and flow distribution. If the field teams are not fixing the right kind of stuff, like the technical data items and stuff, and you know they say we're, all, we're always you're always prioritizing the product, I look at flow distribution. And if the team feels a lack of trust is coming in, then flow safety is a metric that I would look at. You know why do metrics and reporting fail? Why does it fail, right? Like. For many reasons, one of them is we are tracking work in different, different places, in different, different forms, right? So you have epics, you have requirements, you have spreadsheets, project managers who are using Gantt charts, traffic light charts, timesheets. Then you have developers who are looking at features, defects, stories. Then you have testers, test cases, definition of done. Then you have operations team that has SharePoint, incidents, problems, vulnerabilities, change request, all of them using their own separate tools. Right? So one important factor in all of this is the tool fights and incongruence in measurements. Right? Are we all measuring the same thing? Are we all measuring using the same tools? Are we all looking at the same data? Right? How are we sharing data and metrics across the organization? How do we understand capacity? How can we improve the flow of work? All of these are questions that need to be answered or, or we need to have the answers to these questions if we do not want the metrics and reportings to fail. So when I say fail, what do you mean by that? Right? We collect metrics, we present them, and then no action happens. We collect metrics, we present them, and then the semblance of action, and then that enthusiasm dies down. And sometimes, you know, entire tools are disbanded. So for metrics, a few considerations. Um, a failure must initiate inquiry, not blame. Uh, leadership must be open to hearing bad news. If this is not the case, then uh, please do not get into uh, transformations. Uh, failures are learning opportunities. Messengers are not attacked. Team members trust one another and believe that everyone is working in the best interest of the team. Few more considerations. If you had to improve one metric, how will that one metric impact the other metrics that you're capturing? And how will you identify that you're focusing only on one metric and that you're not like over-optimizing one metric while sub-optimizing other metrics? And how would you know when you should start focus of focusing or prioritizing any one metric? And how will you know improvement has started? If you don't have answers to these questions, don't get into metrics tracking or metrics optimization yet. Right? So remember that friction disrupts flow. Um, and this is a, I, love, I love this diagram because it clearly says, you know, um, it, it's all circles and <laughs> each one is at one different in di direction. Right? You have personal interest, then you have emotion and stress, you have complexity and you have a chaotic environment. And the center of all of it remains human limitation. There are limits to what a human being can do with limited knowledge, independent agents, unpredictable events, imperfect information, external actors, actors, different agendas, different interpretations, different priorities, noise, right? And in all, in midst of all of this, you're expected to run flow.